Okay, the final plant I want to talk about in these, this group of cool season is the cyclamen. Um, part of the same group, has a pretty um, cool temperature requirement. It's uh, native to the Mediterranean region. It's in the Primulaceae family. Uh, a lot of growers will force this any time of the year. Uh, there are some growers, it's actually, believe it or not, has moved into the bedding plant market. Um, one of the, this time of year, if we were to go to Welby Gardens, you'll see greenhouses full of cyclamen and they grow cyclamen and they ship it to the high-end bedding plant markets down in the Houston area for uh, their winter season. So it's used as a winter season along the Gulf Coast as a uh, bedding plant. It's been around since the 1700s, late 1700s in Great Britain. It typically, in the old-fashioned mode, requires 15 to 16 months to produce. However, the modern cultivars that we're working with are anywhere from 8 to 10 months to produce. And this is from seed to finish. So it's native to Palestine. And actually, this is one of those plants that it, it just comes out of the desert. And it's uh, Asia Minor, and the Aegean Sea, and stuff like this. And the native habitat, they're strictly dormant during the hot, dry summers. And a new foliage appears after the fall rains and cooler temperatures. It's what we call a pseudomonocot. And I'm not going to get into the botanical classification of this, but it only has one cotyledon in the embryo. And the first true leaf develops opposite the cotyledon. So it's a little bit unique, but it is a member of the Primulaceae family. Now the primary objective in the breeding programs, and most of the breeding is in Holland, uh, is good germination of the, of the seed, early and uniform flowerings, because it is a long-term crop, so they want to speed it up. Floriferousness, of course, nice flowers, attractive foliage. The cyclamen has very pretty leaf. Um, want it to grow fast, and want it to be compact and uniform, and have a long post-harvest life. Most of the seed that we get in the United States is uh, of uh, European origin. I'll put a link on the website for one of the primary cyclamen uh, providers. But there are some Japanese sources coming on. Now, this is pretty much old school cyclamen production. Um, the modern cultivars skip a lot of these steps because the, the breeders have worked good at, very good at getting some of this stuff out. It's a herbaceous plant. It's got bluish green heart-shaped leaves, kind of a little silvery margin. Um, and the leaves are on long petioles that come from a flattened tuber. Okay, And the primary shoot arises from the tuber. Now, prior to the 1800s, this was a, was a pretty hard plant to propagate. And they did it by splitting the tuber itself after it went through the summer rest. Remember, this is a desert species um, that, that's found in um, the eastern Mediterranean region. And it took two years to produce. Now, in the mid early 1800s, uh, started working on seed to flower production and not working with an actual trying to divide a tuber. Some florists grow the cyclamen at 50 degrees temperature over 15 months. But the modern cultivars, they've cut it down to eight months. Now, this is seed to flowering plant, remember. So we're only doing uh, tuber production by cloning, or by, uh, to pre preserve a clone. There's a lot of tissue culture that goes on as well. Fresh seed, seed is important. You can, it, uh, they only last about um, well, 52 months, um, 36 to 50. You know, that would be a hard one to store over at the seed lab next door. Uh, recommended storage, uh, we go to a lot of growers, bring in their seed, and they immediately store it in uh, low humidity. Um, there are some people that say that seed is dormant for 90 days, but uh, it um, typically um, not so much the case in modern seed. And a lot of growers will buy a one-month supply. So if you're a heavy cyclamen grower, you're buying a one-month supply of seed, and you're making an investment. Three by three spacing, an eighth to a quarter inch deep. Um, most people do plug trays, as long as you keep it in a, in a, in a proper plug environment. After we get done with the, the potted plant section, we're going to spend 
good bit of the remainder of the semester on bedding plants. So we'll talk about plug propagation. Germination, 66 to 68. This has got to be in dark conditions, so we're not going to do this in a greenhouse, or we're not going to do this in a germination room that's got light. Anything, anytime we let the temperature get above six, uh, 72 degrees, we're going to actually inhibit germination. Ideal pH of the potting soil is 6, and we want to keep it above 5.5, because remember, this is a somewhat arid species. Germination in about five days, um, and the first, the first root that forms, or the primary root, actually is going to start to swell to form that tuber. And then after 28 days, pushing a month now, uh, you get the hypocotyl formation, and then the cotyledon blade will come out. And it's at that point that we're going to take it out of the germination room and put it into a uh, shaded greenhouse. We're not going to, once the true leaves are evident, we'll start to see, we're going to move this out of the germination area and out of the humidity and move it into a greenhouse that's less humid with a 68 degree night temperature. This is complicated up to this point. Most growers that use liners buy in plants already started. 80 to 90 days is when we see the true leaves. Then we're going to get leaf initiation. Um, and after we get about 17 leaves, that's when we start to see the axillary branches. And we're not even to blooming yet. 17 weeks after sowing, we're going to get um, more leaf units. At this point, we're going to bump it up to a larger pot. And the, cube, the tuber top needs to be at the top of the potting soil. We don't want to bury the tuber top into the ground. Deeper planting, however, we can use it to get wider plants. It needs a light mix, um, pot to pot. Um, you can bump this particular plant, as, uh, increase it in size as long as you're not disturbing the roots. If you've got lots of fertilizer in your soil mix, they, you don't need to add any fertilizer, but typically we're going to add 100 parts per million and keep it balanced between, uh, a balance between ammonium and nitrate. So here we're going to want equal parts. Um, typically, this is a high phosphorus fertilizer, so we need to add f phosphate. Uh, if you put in too much calcium or not enough iron, you're going to work, you become high, high uh, levels of, of chlorosis in the foliage. And we want to keep the pH of the potting soil between 5.5 and 6. We can inject CO2 to speed up production up to about 1,000 parts per million. And remember your fertility chart. Now, cyclamen will not bloom until it hits a specific vegetation stage. And flower buds initiate in the axils of the leaf after we have at least six true leaves. And the flower bud is going to be really slow. Now, it's not going to actually bloom until it has about 35 leaves that are starting to unfold. And this, of course, varies with cultivar. And the modern cultivars bloom a little faster. And flowering is affected by your fertilizer rate. A high level of potassium and low nitrogen prior to the 15 weeks will de low flower, delay flowering about a week. But if we keep it up to 200 parts per million, we'll have flowering in two weeks. So we want, want to make sure we don't starve this plant. And it, as long as we keep it in the normal range of what we grow most of our crops, you'll not have any inhibitory effects on flowering. If you don't feed this plant, you're gonna, it's not going to last long enough in the, in the post-production life or in the retail center or in the home. So we're going to feed this plant up to the day it leaves the greenhouse. Standard 212, and we're going to increase it as the plant gets bigger. And to get the optimum leaf size, we're going to increase the potassium level a little bit at some point and make sure that it never starves with, never has a phosphate deficiency. Warm roots, cool soil, cool weather, 
if it gets too warm, it's not going to delay it too much. We want to keep the temperature somewhat, the temperature proportions between night and day the same. And 45 days before your scheduled flowering, that's when we're going to drop our temperature. This is the old cultivars, of course, um, to 62. And this is, will start to keep us in range. If your night temperature gives, gives above 68, the flower buds will abort. This is a complicated plant. Uh, we're not really sure about what the photoperiod response is. It's more to total light or daily light uh, integral activity. Has a lot to do with flower bud formation. The more, live, the more light you have, the more light accumulation, not necessarily the photoperiod, but the more photons will give you more leaves and more flowers. This is often grown as a Christmas crop. Um, so seeds, uh, April 1, we're going to start sowing our seed April 1, uh, move into the light after uh, 12 weeks. Four weeks after that, we're going to transplant, drop our temperature, and with any luck, have our crop ready for Christmas. If you miss Christmas with this crop, delay a little bit, shoot for Valentine's Day. It's still marketable. <laughs>